One of the greatest things about having this studio space, this space here is, is my studio space. I love it because much like I'm doing here, I've just walked in, it is 10 minutes past nine. I've had my coffee, I've had my protein shake, and now I'm sat down here recording. My camera setup is all on wheels. The whole rig, I've got my microphone, my light, the camera, the monitor, it's all on wheels. I plug it in, we hit record, and we're good to go. And the same goes for the rest of my studio. My charging trolley, it's on wheels. My camera is set up, ready to go on wheels. My tether trolley is plugged in. All I have to do is turn it on and we are good to go. And this is such an important thing to do. And of course, if you're sharing a house with people or if you live with your partner and kids, you probably can't have a permanent setup, but there's things you can do to make your life easier. And one of the things I'm constantly striving to do in this studio space is make life as easy as possible. And I wanna show you some of the ways that I've done that in order to make that, you know, if I come in today and I've got an idea in my head, I'm like, yes, I've got this great creative idea. It's not too much hassle to go and shoot it. I'm a firm believer, no matter how much you want this career, the easier you make it to take a photograph, the more likely you are to do it. But also, the less hoops you have to jump through to take the photograph, the more energy you have at the end of the day to take the photograph. This is why on big pro shoots we have photographer, that'd be me, agent, producer, stylist, creative director, art director, art buyer in the background. We'll have a first assistant, second assistant, lighting assistant, digital tech, retoucher. All of these people in place, the rental house, the studio that we rent, we don't actually shoot commercial stuff here. All of that stuff will be in place so that I only have to deal with the one bit. The less you have to do, the better your work is. And this is something that took me a long time to get on board with. I was like, no, I'll do everything and then obviously do a bad job of it. It'd be like me building my own car to drive to work. Of course it will be rubbish. You get the skilled people in. And having this like just minimum amount of hassle to shoot, one, it makes you more likely to shoot. And two, it means that when you do shoot, you're not as decision fatigued. I don't know if you know about decision fatigue. It's one of the reasons I wear the same clothes every day and have the same breakfast and lunch every day. Because if I don't have to make that decision, I can save that mental energy because I don't have a great deal of it, I'll be honest, to make good decisions later on. So let's have a look around. First up is my YouTube rig, which I'm sure you're aware of. It's the Blackmagic 6K, and it's just on a cheap set of wheels. Really cheap. If you have a tripod, you can't afford a big column stand like I've got. Bang it on wheels, as long as you've got brakes on it, then you've got a, a movable camera rig. Keep it set up, it's good to go. Now the next part of this is my tether trolley. Tether trolley is a huge, huge important thing. Mine is not particularly fancy, but it's not also the cheapest. It's a bit of a midway house because we don't do commercial shoots here, but we do, 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 do. <laughs> we do do test shoots here, so I still need some form of tether trolley. The really good ones, they cost thousands. I use a rock and roller cart, it was a few hundred pounds. I bought it off my mate Rick, I think. He'll correct me in the comments if I didn't. And I've got it set up with a MacBook Pro, a couple of BenQ monitors, and then we've also got one monitor which has got wireless on it, so we can use the video cameras to that one to have like an extra screen for the Digi to see. And the other one is just for tethering for everyone to see in the room. And obviously we use Capture One because all pros do. And we also use the Capture One Pilot on two to three iPads around the studio, so no one has to really get in each other's hair when we're testing. Sometimes on smaller productions where they don't have the full budget, we will pack this entire kit and take it with us but that's rare. Often I'll lend it to a Digitech if they've not got the full kit themselves um, and we'll rent it to them as part of our rental cost. And you know, it's just in a way to make a little bit of extra money, but that's not really the reason we have it. I have it because it's permanently set up and all I have to do to start a shoot is plug my camera into it. Now for tethering, we're using the Area 51 cables. They are the best cables. I'm gonna do a video on cables because since USB-C, you can't just plug anything into anything. It's an absolute nightmare. Um, once you could just buy a cheap Amazon USB cable and plug it in, tether, and everything was fine. Sadly, with USB-C, that is not the case. You need some seriously fancy stuff to make sure it will definitely work day in, day out. Now, one of the main things that ties it all together is the shoot table. For years, we struggled. We had like the little legs you put a plank of wood on, and of course, someone kicks it, it falls over. Then I stole a table from a pub, don't ask. It weighed a ton, it was very stable, but it started to warp over the years. And because it was so heavy, setting it up myself was actually very difficult. And as I get older in age, it, anyway. But thankfully, that is now fixed, thanks to FlexiSpot. And this video today is made possible via FlexiSpot. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be making this video because we wouldn't have the funds to do so. Now, FlexiSpot, they make these standing desks and they're gonna kill me for doing this because it's designed so you don't get a bad back and you can stand and work and all that good stuff. And yes, I'll probably use it for some of that. But what I did, <laughs> which they're not aware of, I took my tools to it, I drilled some holes in it, 
nip down to B&Q, which is like a Home Depot, I don't know, whatever the equivalent is in the States, bought some casters, good quality casters with brakes on it. I drilled into the bottom of their desk and I placed the casters on it. Now, this is probably not what the desk is designed to withstand and I wouldn't advise doing it, obviously. Sorry, FlexiSpot. But this here fixes two issues. One is I've now got a table I can move easily. Very good. And two, it's a rising and falling table. Now, Obviously for flat lays, you want the table as low as possible and this goes slightly lower than a usual table. Sometimes it's got to be on the floor. That's, that's not, you know, up for debate. But when you're doing hero shots and you're shooting up at a high angle and you're using a normal table, it means having your camera all the way down on the ground. Me kind of doing some contortion act so I can get the right camera angle. This fixes that problem. And as you'll see from the amount of drinks work I'm producing at the moment, this is something which is coming up a lot. So that is what we're using the standing desk for. Yes, I'll probably hot desk out here now and again on it, for sure, but this solves a very real problem. Now to the desk, we've attached a wireless monitor, and that is so the stylist can have like a little monitor there working on it whilst we're working on other stuff. Very useful. Comes from the HDMI output straight to the desk, and you know, it's all good. We've got the brakes on, it's solid, it's sturdy. We've set it to the right height. It means I can sit on a table like this, or a chair, I obviously sit on small coffee tables like I'm doing now. Um, I'll sit on my little stool, and I can bring the camera to the height I want to work at, and then the FlexiSpot desk allows me to move the subject to the height it should be at. And yes, I'm aware of how bougie this is. You don't necessarily need this, but it really fixes a problem for me, and I've always wanted a standing desk, so my hipster dreams are coming alive. So that, that's that part of the setup. Now the camera itself, I always leave one camera out. I keep my two backup bodies separately inside a special climate controlled safe, along with loads of other lenses, which is hidden away and I have those in two different locations. But my main camera, I leave it out all the time. It's always out. It's always ready to go. It's always got the tether cables and the PC sync and the flash trigger on it. It's got the lens on it. I only use two lenses, really, 90 or 50. It's got the 90 on it because 90% 90 of the time, the 90 millimeter lens is the lens I need. So that's all set up to go. That camera is mains powered. So with the desk being mains powered as well, we now have a multi-socket underneath. We plug the camera into the desk multi-socket. The whole thing runs seamlessly. Don't have to worry about charged batteries, don't have to charge batteries, change batteries, any of that nonsense. There's no memory cards involved. It's just plug and play. And we're good to go in about, what, 15 seconds from coming in with an idea to being able to shoot. And I cannot tell you how important this is. And it's something I'm constantly trying to improve on as well. I always want to make my life as easy as possible. How can I get from arriving with idea to producing idea as quickly as possible? What's the fastest way for me to get to that? Because that is guaranteed to help me improve my career and get further along with it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some great things to think about as to how to increase your productivity. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.